One of the parts of that that's really interesting is it's our culture to receive testimonies from our members who are incarcerated. And the reason it's our culture is we send out a newsletter twice a year to folks and we ask them a question generally. We ask them what brought you to the CL, what do you love about the CLF or do you have a prayer to share? Or do you have something to share? So we always have like a back and forth with them. So we get a lot of, um, a lot of testimonies from them and I was really excited that there are actually 10 of them in the book so that was really cool um, and some of my favorite you're not supposed to have favorites but some of my favorite names are in the book so that's exciting um, some really prolific writers and I will be honest um, two things I wanted to say today is our numbers are growing and the testimonies are what make our numbers grow in the prison ministry because it's all been word of mouth from one inmate to the next and they talk about Unitarian Universalism in such a way because it's saving them especially people who are um, dealing with issues of their sexuality and questioning um, where they they stand and questioning whether they're precious and a person who deserves God's love um, many of them are still very, very Christian and so we've had one person that said I the CLF has been a lifeline that has saved my life, and Unitarian Universalism has saved my life. We hear that constantly. Um, I have one letter that I opened right now, and it says um, that I'm proud to be a Unitarian Universalist. That's the other thing. They have this really sense of pride and deep ownership to this religion because before they found us, um, they were labeled as somebody who was damaged or bad, and, and we're here to really um, celebrate um, what's great about them. And it says, today I'm not alone. I have a beautiful family, and I'm the member of a CLF, at the CLF, my home. I love you all and wish you great blessings. So we get blessed so much and get so much feedback from people that it is, I agree with Meg, if you're having a bad day, it's almost like looking at a picture of a baby. You can just kind of go through these testimonials and just really feel um, this underlying heartbeat of our faith and how it saves people's lives. Um, we have lots of people waiting um, on our waiting list to write someone directly who's a Unitarian Universalist and everybody who um, to become eligible for them they have had to take new UU so they're relatively new and they're really ready to share their story and it builds a lot of really meaningful amazing connections and then the testimonies of the people in the free world you know like you and I who talk about their relationships with their pen pals is really significant as well. And, and we find that on those one-on-one -on -one connections that the ministry is really flowing both ways. So that's one easy way. And like I said, I think I'm really gonna ask the question, um, how do you talk to other people, other people in where you live about Unitarian Universalism? And you were also saying something about saving lives. I think that in the prison ministry, in a literal sense, we are saving lives because to learn, and, and it was brought up, uh, um, one of our phrases that we use is worthy now of love and justice, to learn that who you are today, you are worthy of love. It, it just can really turn someone on around that's in a very dark, dark corner. So it really is saving people.